hello. Uh, I hope you are uh, doing uh, very well. Okay, so uh, you're done with your quiz, your test, test number two. So we are going to have another quiz, quiz number three and the, the test. Uh, so I try to, uh, to create your test over the weekend. I think you can see it early next week. Uh, so what we're going to do, we are going to have a couple of more uh, sections from this chapter four, the characteristics of the vector spaces to finish it. And then we'll be able to get to the chapter, chapter five, which is quite an interesting chapter. Uh, so uh, these uh, leftover, the sections, uh, a couple of them are straightforward for seven, for eight. So I'm going to give you some idea of these two. And then the last two is related to the linear transformation, which is much more interesting and useful for future. So uh, let's try uh, to give you some idea quickly as four, seven, four, eight. So then we'll be able to concentrate on that linear transformation and we try to finish it, you know, I, by by the end of this week, maybe by by Sunday. So that would be your your target, okay? And it can be done. Uh, so uh, let's see if we can uh, give you those ideas of. There are some uh, quantity characteristic of the vector space that uh, would help us quite a lot to get some shortcuts for the some of the problems that we've been doing. Okay, especially we've been trying. Uh, you see, we're trying to uh, set up vectors were given to you, and then we try to prove that this set up the vectors are linearly uh, independent or dependent and constructing a basis. So we did have some methods to do it, algebraically or just using matrices. But uh, those type of ideas can be simplified by using these uh, quantities that we're going to talk about it in uh, this uh, section 4.7. Uh, a matrix uh, would be given to you. We are going to consider that the vectors which are going to be in the row of the matrix and the column of the matrix, we introduce uh, new uh, spaces, if you like, or vector spaces. A space containing the row vectors and the space containing the column vectors. Okay, so that's the idea that we are going to have. So let's see if I can fix this one and then uh, we go for it. Okay, yes, I'm just coming from other class. It seems to be all right. Then I'm going to focus it in a minute that give you better, better format. Okay, uh, so there are a couple of uh, nice uh, ideas in this uh, section. Let's see, I try to see the focus this one. I may use it and I may get a better one. So I hope to get a better one. Yes, now that's it. Okay, so this is gonna be 4.7, easy, but quite interesting section. Uh, okay, uh, so we're going to talk about sub quantity we call the row space. Row space is gonna be, you know, a matrix would be given to you. You put the row, uh, the, the row vectors, okay? Uh, a row vectors uh, together that give us uh, something we call it row space. Then you are going to have a column matrix, a column space. So the column space uh, would include the, the column vector, okay, column space. And there are a couple of other things that we talk about it. There is something that we call it null space, which is going to be useful for, for future, okay? So let's see what is going to be these three quantities, okay? Three quantities and two problems for your next test, or yes, it's going to be next quiz, if you like. Okay, so the definition is going to be, this would cover the row vectors, this would cover the, the column vector. So officially, this is it. Let's, uh, okay, uh, this is, let A be A. Okay, let A be A. Okay, let A be an M by N matrix. Okay, this notation is important that we get M by N. So M is going to be number of the rows and the N number of the columns. Okay, this is it. Now we go with the, okay, if we go with the, with the rows, so your rows, each vector would have N coordinates. So that's why we call this one 
if this is going to be the case, uh, okay, the n and uh, topples, if you like, those coordinates uh, correspond. Okay, corresponding, corresponding to the rows. Okay, corresponding to the rows uh, of A. Okay, of A are going to be called, or called, okay, the row vectors, the row vectors, okay, row vectors of A. So if you put the, each row as a, considered as a vector, you put them together, you are going to have a row vectors. So uh, similarly, we can put those in the columns. So similarly, if you consider the column, you are going to have n column. You see, we get n column, but each column would have m coordinates. So this is going to be similarly the m by one, the column vector, m by one matrices. Okay, matrices that uh, corresponds to the columns. Okay, corresponding to the column of A, to the column. Okay, column of A, uh, these are going to be called, so are called, are called the, okay, the column space. The column. Okay, the column space, column space of A. Okay, so basically, if you put the vectors of the, you know, the column of the, of the matrix, so each column would consider one vector. Okay, this vector would be M dimensional, if you like, M coordinates. So these are going to be your column space. If you consider the row, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, M. But each of these vectors would have what? Would have n coordinates, n coordinates. So this is going to be the row space. So the row space, each vector would have n coordinates. So this is going to be a subspace of Rn. The column vector, you see the column vector. The column vector that we're going to consider, you are going to have uh, how many? You are going to have uh, uh, m column but they are going to be n dimensional. So it's going to be the space of the, okay, this is going to be subspace of the, uh, okay, m coordinates, going to be subspace of Rm. Let's give you one example and then we create the official format. So uh, for example, if you consider one matrix, okay, so if A is going to be a two by three matrix, so it's going to be zero, one, Okay, it's going to be zero, one, negative one. And then over here you have a negative two, negative two, three, and four. So if this is going to be a matrix, as you can see, we have two rows, three columns. So the row, the row vectors are going to be, so the row vectors, the row vectors are, are the following. You get zero, one, negative three, three there, could dimension of one if you like, or coordinate, and we get the negative two, three, and four. Okay, so all of them, each vector is going to be in R3, one, two, three. Okay, and the column vectors, and the, the column vectors, the column vectors are going to be, you see your column vector right down is a column form, zero and negative two. Okay, this is one vector. Then you have one and three. This is the second vector and the third one, which is going to be negative one and four. Okay, so we get three vectors, but each vector is going to be in R2. Okay, so you must be careful, you know, from now on to see where your vectors are coming from. Okay, for the row vectors, for the row vectors, depends on the column. So it's a row vectors, but they are going to be in R3, R3, because you have three columns. Then in case of the column vectors, column vectors, you get one, two, three. 
Okay, each column, we have two rows, so they are going to be in R2, if you like. Okay, so make sure you know where you are. So, just uh, give these uh, uh, definitions officially. So, the official form is going to be if A is, okay, this is it, if A is going to be what? Is uh, A or N M by N matrix. Okay, so this is going to be the case. So, if this is going to be the case, I introduce the, the row vectors. So, the row space. So the row space, uh, this is it, there were row vectors, now row space. Row space is gonna be a space that is spanned by those row vectors. Okay, so the row space, row space of A is simply what is a subspace, the subspace, the subspace, subspace of Rn. Depends on how many columns do you have. You see the coordinates are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So N. So the row space can be a subspace of Rn. Okay, subspace of Rn spanned by row vectors. Spanned by row vectors. So a subspace is spanned by the row vectors of A is going to be called a row space. Okay, row space, and make sure you know that this is going to be a subspace of Rn. Okay, now similarly, the column space. Okay, uh, similarly, the, the, the column space, the column space uh, of A is going to be, you see, it's a column. It's column of, but the coordinates depends on the, okay, depends on the row. So they are going to be in Rm. Okay, the column space of A is the subspace. It's going to be the subspace of Rm. Okay, subspace of Rm spanned by, okay, that's going to be spanned by the, spanned by the column vectors. Spanned by the, by the column vectors. Okay, so a subspace spanned by the row vectors is just row space. The subspace spanned by the column vectors is just the column vectors. Okay, so what's going to be your, what are we going to do? We are going to see, uh, okay, how we're going to form this uh, subspace or this space, okay, row space. And of course, if you have a basis for this row space, and that nicely can be done. You know, nicely we can form our, uh, our row space. Now, uh, how are we going to do it? Uh, this, uh, you need a basis. So if you have a basis for the row space, uh, then you can, you know that each vector is going to be what? A linear combination of those basic vectors. Uh, so uh, how are we going to find it? Now, what we are going to do is uh, uh, the idea is uh, going to be, you see, if a uh, generally, uh, if a matrix is given to you and you'd be interested in finding the row space or the column space, uh, so what you can do is you can do those uh, change, you know, if you change your matrix into the so called row echelon form or row equivalent form. Uh, so, the situation for the result matrix and the situation for A would be would be the same. So in order to investigate the situation for the given matrix, we may change it to the, you know, we change it into the format of the row echelon form, then talk about it. That would be easier. So give it a remark. And a nice theorem to see how we're going to, how we're going to do it. The remark is going to be if I give you a, vector, a, a matrix and then you simplify it. So you can find the row space and the column space of the, okay, of the simplified form. Because it's gonna be a space is spanned by, you know, spanned by a basis. So this is the remark, very useful. If, okay, 
uh, if uh, if uh, a is going to be okay if the if the matrix if uh, n okay n by n m by n matrix matrix a if we convert it we change it okay is uh, going to be is we convert it is uh, row equivalent you know the row equivalent means you just do those type of operation row operation uh, on this one and we get the result okay do the row and form if you like it's going to be row equivalent to the to an m by n m by n matrix okay let's say matrix b so you have to eat you just do a couple of those uh, elementary row operation uh, to get the b then the, the the row space of the a and the b are the same so the the row space okay so the row space of a of a is going to be what is equal to is equal to the row space Okay, equal to the row space, row space of, row space of B. That would be very useful. Okay, so if a matrix is given to you and you want to identify the row space or anything related to the row space of A, so you can simplify it. Simplified means you can change it to the no, row echelon form if you like. So if you change it to the row echelon form, then we are going to have this nice, uh, nice observation, if you like. So what's going to be nice observation? The nice observation is uh, going to be, we are interested in the basis. So I give you the, okay, I give a matrix A. If you have a basis for the row space, then you have everything you like, if you like. So how are we going to find these, uh, these bases? Okay, so, this is the only job that you are going to do, you're going to do for us. So we'd like to know finding, or how we're going to find. Finding, okay, finding a basis. Finding basis for, for a row space. Okay, row space and column space and column, column space. Column space of a given, of a given, okay, of a given matrix, matrix, matrix A. So I give you a matrix A and I ask you, you know that, if you have a, if you have a basis for your, your space, means you have everything. So I give you a matrix A. How are you going to give me a basis for the row space and the basis for the column space? Okay, so this is the way we're going to do it. Now, the way we do it, first we change this matrix into the row shell form. Okay, so this is going to be your, uh, your job. So uh, this is it. Uh, if, okay, uh, if, suppose this is it, suppose A is a given okay a given m by n matrix matrix okay with i change it to the row echelon form okay with a row echelon form row echelon row echelon form row echelon form r Okay, so you give me A, I give you R. I find the R first. Okay, you know that. When you find the row echelon form, what is this? You know that every non-zero number in each row is start with the one. Those pivots, okay, we get the one. Then uh, what you're going to do, you know, the, the situation, you know that. Uh, there's going to be one, then everything else must be, everything else must be zero. So, when this uh, situation is given to you, you go to the R. 
you pick all the non-zero row, you know that you may get some rows with the zeros. So you pick the non-zero row vectors of R, you put them together, that would be a basis for A. So A is going to be linear. That's, that's true because you do some type of uh, linear operation to get to the R. So you pick the non-zero, non-zero row vectors of R, and that would be a basis for A. Then you come back. How are we going to find a, a basis for the column space? Okay, for the column space. Then you go back to the this row echelon form. You know that in the row echelon form, in, in the columns, some of the columns or all the columns, if they start with a non-zero number, that non-zero number is one. You identify which columns in R, which column in R contains, okay, contains that one. Then you come back to the original one to the A, you pick that column. This means if the pivot one is in the first column in R, then you go back to the original matrix and we get the first column of A. That would be one basic vector. Then you go back and check the other ones. Okay, so when we get to the row echelon four, the non-zero, non-zero rows of R would form a basis for the row space. Then you check to see where those ones pivots, in which columns they are in the R. You come back to the I and you pick the corresponding columns of the A. Those are going to be the basics for the column A. Okay, so this is the way you did. Let's write it down, then I give you example that I'm going to do it. So the first part. For the row space, that's easier. For a basis. For a basis. For a basis of the row space. The row space of A. Simply use, okay, use what? Use the non-zero. The non-zero, non-zero rows of, or rows vector, rows of R. That's it. You may get a row with all zeros, you ignore it. The other one, you bring them here, that give you, okay, that give you a basis for the row space. Okay, this is it. For the row space, you pick what? Non-zero rows of R. That give you a basis for the row space, okay? The other variant for the column, for a basis, a basis of the column space, column space of A. So what are we going to do? We are going to use the column of A, okay? Use the the columns. Use the columns of A, okay, corresponding, correspondings to the column in R containing the pivots, okay, corresponding to the, to the column, columns of R, of the row echelon four, of R containing, okay, containing the pivots, pivots. You know that the pivots is uh, what? Leading, leading ones, leading ones, okay, of the row vectors, of the row vectors. That's it. So for the column, you have to get back to the, you pick the, uh, you pick the vectors from the A. But uh, for the row space, you pick the vector from the, uh, from the R. Okay, the row echelon folder. You know, sometimes we can do something else if you want to get it from the R, but for the time being, this is going to be the case. Okay, so for the column space of A, you are going to pick what? You're going to pick the column of uh, columns of A 
corresponds to the columns of R containing the pivots or just uh, those leading. That's it. It's quite interesting uh, uh, method and there's going to be a nice application of all the problems that you did on the, okay, all the problems related to the basis that you did in your test, okay, in your test number two. Okay, example, then you'll find out and give one in your next quiz. This is it. Metrics would be given straightforward. They ask for the a basis for the row space and the basis for the column space. So find a basis. Okay, find the basis for the for the row space. Row space and a basis and a basis for the column space. For the okay for the column for the column space column space uh, of the matrix A of the matrix the matrix A that's it you change it to the row echelon form and you pick those numbers right away okay so what's the matrix this is it A equal to uh, this is going to be a five by five matrix. So this is it. Uh, I get the one, three, one, three, zero, zero, negative one, two, that's first one. Then we get the zero, negative two, negative two, four, negative two, and zero. Then you have, have a, you're going to have a three, 11, negative four, negative one and six. Okay, then you get the two, five, two, five, three, negative four and zero. You see, this is gonna be a given matrix. And then you want to find the basis. There you are. Change it to the row echelon form, that's it. Change to the row echelon form and then pick those vectors. So what I need is, this is already one, so I need to take care of these two. Okay, so I quickly, what I do, this is going to be R3. I change the R3 into the R3 minus 3 R1. Okay, and this is R4. I change the R4 into what? 2 R, uh, 2 R1. Okay, to, uh, to take care of it. So this is going to be the leftover. So the first one's going to be unchanged. One, three, zero, negative one, and two. This is unchanged. We get the zero, negative two, four, negative two, zero. Then this is R3 minus three R1. So that makes this one into the zero, three R1. That's going to be nine. That give me, okay, that's it. Uh, this is going to be three R1. So we get 11 minus uh, uh, two that give us, uh, okay, I just want to make sure you get it all right. So that's gonna be, this is R3, which is gonna be, yes, uh, it's gonna be 11, so we, we get two, so we get a two, and then we continue three. Uh, so you are going to have a zero, two, negative four, negative four, two and zero, okay, three or one. This is it, that gives you six, six minus six would be zero, and that gives you two, etc. okay? And for the R4, is gonna be R4, two R1, so that gives us a zero here, two R1 would be a, a negative six, so you subtract it, we get negative one, so that would be three, negative two, and negative four. Okay, so that's gonna be the first action. Okay, so I got the first column all right. So I need to take care of the others. Okay, this is gonna be quite a lot uh, to, to do. So what I do, I change, I like to change this one into the one. So that would be easy. I just, uh, this is R2, I divided by negative two. So that gave me the one that I'm gonna be interested in. Okay, so I need to take this one to be zero. So I add these two together to get the zero, so I take the R3 into the R3 plus R2. That would give me zero here. Now I need this one. 
uh, to be zero. So uh, this is R4. So, you know, I can wait or just do it now. It's going to be R4 and uh, uh, this is it at the same time minus one half of R2. Okay, because I want to make it zero. So divide this one by, by two and just add it right away. Okay, so if we do this uh, type of operations, so this is going to be the leftover. The first one's going to be one, three and change, zero and negative one and two. If you divide this by the negative uh, two, that's going to be zero, one, negative two, one and zero. Okay, if you add these two together, uh, that give you all uh, zeros. Yes, uh, that give you zero, 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 zero. Uh, that's it. And then for the last one, R4 minus one half, this is going to be minus uh, this one. Okay, so uh, that give you, uh, this is it. Uh, so that give me zero. Okay, that give me zero. Uh, zero, one, negative one and negative one and then negative, negative four. Okay, so that's R2 minus one half of the R1. You know that this would be zero, so uh, this is it, that can be negative four, yes. So uh, that is it. So what else do, do I need to do? I get the one here, zero, uh, so uh, this is not the row reduce echelon form, it's just uh, row echelon form. So the row echelon form means you just need to start this one with the one. So I got the one here, so I'm done. So I switch these two and we are almost uh, done, okay? So I'm going to switch uh, these two together. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the switching one. So switch the R3 and the R4, so R3 and, so I switch the R3 and the R4, and we are almost done. Okay, so that give me the row echelon form. Okay, so the matrix is gonna be one, three, one, three, zero, one, three, zero, and negative one, negative one and two. Okay, the second one is gonna be zero, zero, one, negative two. I have one and the zero, I switch these two, so that give me zero, 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 one, negative one and negative four. And the last one's gonna be zero, 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 zero. Okay, so I check, I start with the one, okay? And uh, everything else is zero. I start with the one here again, and I start with the one and the last one is zero. So remember it's just a row echelon form, not row reduce echelon form. You don't have to change everything else to the zero. Make sure you start with the pivot one, and as you go on, you move the one to the to the right. Okay, now we can pick the basis. So what's going to be the row basis? We just pick the non-zero rows vectors here. So one, two, three. One, two, three, these three vectors are going to be your uh, basis for the row vectors, okay? And uh, this is it. Then, for the columns. You look to see where these leading ones are. The leading one are in the first, okay, first column, in the second column and the third one. You go back to the original one, you pick these column vectors in the first, second, third, one, two, three. So you put uh, these uh, three together. This would be the column, okay, basis, basis for the column space and the rows one, two, three. Okay, so for the row space, you pick the, the non-zero row vectors from the R, but for the column one, you check to see where these leading ones are in the first, second, the third column, and you pick the corresponding column from the, from the A. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so just the row echelon form, not the row reduced echelon form. So now you have to give us uh, the result. Uh, this is going to be the result that we're going to declare. You declare a basis. Okay, a, a basis uh, for the row space. A basis uh, for the row space. 
for your row space are going to be, okay, this is it, containing the, the vectors from the row echelon form. We have three non-zero rows and they are one, three, one, three, zero, negative one, two, that was the first row. Uh, the other one is zero, one, zero, one, negative two, one, zero. And the last one is zero, zero, one, negative one and negative four. It's a basis. As you know that the row space is going to be a subspace of R5 because you have five columns. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the row space is in R5 and this is going to be a basis. Okay, now uh, a basis for the column. So you pick these from the row echelon form, equivalent one. But uh, for the basis for the column, okay, for the column space, you go back to the original one. Remember the pivots were in the first column, the second and the third. So we get, uh, you pick the first and the second and the third column of A, and that give you a basis for the column vector, okay? So the first column of A is one, zero, three, two, okay? And the second column is going to be three, negative two, three, negative two, 11 and five. Okay, and the third column contains the zero, four, negative four, and, and three. Okay, so that give you, that give you a basis. And as you can see, we talk about it, a, a column basis is gonna be a subspace of Rm, M the number of the rows, we get four number, four rows. So they are four dimensional, one, two, three, four. So this is a subspace of R4, but this is a subspace of R5 to get these numbers. It's a very easy, easy operation. Okay. So a simple method, a matrix is given. You want to find the basis for the row space and the column space. You change it to the row echelon form the non-zero row vectors are going to be the basis for the row space. Okay, uh, you check the pivots, the position of the pivots, the first, the second, the third column. You go to the A and you pick the corresponding one and then you are done. Okay, now one uh, conclusion, uh, one application. Remember previously we give you a set of vectors and we ask you to prove that they are linearly independent or we ask you to prove that they are a basis. Okay, so what you can do, you can use this method. So uh, what you can do is you can put those given, uh, okay, you can put those uh, given vectors uh, as a, okay, as a row vectors of a matrix and use the same method. So let's give a remark to see what I'm talking about. So that's a very good method. Uh, so this is it. Uh, so basically, this is one of the application, the above method, if you like, or the theorem. Above method, again, we give you one. Uh, okay, above method that can be used. Okay, can be used uh, to find the basis. Okay, to find a basis. Basis for what? For the for the subspace, for the subspace, a span, subspace is span by the given, okay, by the given vectors, by the given, okay, a set of vectors, set of vectors, like, you know, like the V1, V2, let's say up to the, whatever it is, uh, VK of, of Rn, if you like. Uh, so if, if, if this is going to be the question, uh, we can do it, you know, with the previous method that we did, uh, basis. 
but uh, you can, what you are going to do, you are going to put these vectors as a row vectors of a matrix, and you just find the basis for the row vectors. That's it. That give you know that give you a nice a nice result. So uh, this is going to be an example. Very useful. So what do you want to do? You want to find the basis. Find a basis. Find the basis for the subspace. For the subspace. Okay, subspace of R3, for example. R3 is spanned by the given vectors. A span by these vectors. By the, the vectors. Uh, this is it, by the vectors. Vectors, uh, you know, you can say, you can call it V1, V2, V3, if you like. But these are your vectors, okay? The vectors are going to be negative one, two, five, then you have a three, zero, three, and then you have a five, one, eight. Okay, so these are the given vectors, you know, there's going to be a span subspace, it's going to be subspace spanned by these vectors, okay, so what you would like to do, you would like to find the basis. Okay, we'd like to find the basis for this uh, for this space. So what we can do is we just uh, solution. We are going to consider these as a row of a matrix. That's it. You see, you are going to suppose you create a matrix yourself, and then you put this as a row vectors. So you create it. You see, you get the negative one, negative one, two, five. Then you have a three, zero, three, and then you have a five, one, eight. You see, make a, make a matrix. So that's it. You see, if you find a basis for the row vectors, that's exactly what you are looking for. Okay, you know that the row space is going to be what? A row space is a subspace spanned by the row vectors, and that's exactly what you are looking for. Okay, so uh, this is it. Uh, so what we're going to do, we are going to just uh, find uh, and find uh, a basis, a basis for the row space, the row space, row space of A. Exactly, this is what you're looking for, okay? Uh, so uh, you know what to do, you have to change it to the row echelon form. Okay, so what we're going to do is convert or write, write A into, uh, okay, in, in a row, okay, row echelon four. Easy to do it. Uh, so what we need to do, uh, this is it. You need to multiply this one by a negative one to make it positive, and then you take care of this. You can do it at the same time, and then we be done. Okay, very nice, uh, nice application. Okay, so let's uh, do it. So what I do, I multiply this one by negative one to make this one positive, and at the same time, I get rid of the three and the five. So uh, that's it. Uh, quickly, we can do it. I have to write the A again, so I can have it here. Okay, so this is my A. I have a negative one two, five, then uh, it's a three, zero, three, and then we have a five, one, and eight. Okay, that's what we have. So we quickly change it. So I'm going to change the R1 into the negative R1. I get rid of this one, so it's R2. I'm going to change R2 into the R2 plus uh, 3 R1. So I, this would be out, and this is R3. I change it to the R3 plus 5 R1. Okay, nice and easy operations. So what we're going to get is going to be, this would be 1, negative 2, negative 5. Uh, 3 R1, so that make it to the 0. Okay, zero, that give us a six, a three times two, 
uh, that would be 1518. Uh, R3, uh, you multiply this one by five, that gives you zero. Okay, plus 10, 11. 10, 11, and this is going to be what? 25, 33. 33, uh, that's it. 33. So we got the one here. We have to change this one into the one. So naturally you divide it by six. So R2 into the one, six of R2, <coughs> that would uh, take care of this one. Then I change, uh, divide this one by 11 to just make this one into one again. Okay, so R3 is gonna be one, 11. You can do it later or just now, okay. So what's gonna be the conclusion? It's gonna be one, negative two, negative five. And then I have the zero, one, three. Okay, that's gonna be zero, one, three again. Okay. So we already got the one here. So we have to get rid of this one. So naturally we change the R3 into the, okay, we change the R3 into the uh, R3 minus, uh, okay, R3 minus R, R2, okay, and that will give us what we are looking for. So that's gonna be one and negative two, negative five, and we have a zero, one, three, and this column all would be zero, zero, zero. Okay, so uh, this is it. So this is gonna be your R, Remember row echelon only, just start with the pivot. Uh, so as you can see, you have a two non-zero row. So these two vector would be a basis for the row space, which is the one that we are interested in. Okay, uh, that's it. So you can, you know, call them something or just go ahead and just uh, do it. Okay, so uh, you just uh, claim that uh, this is it. So we get the one, negative two, negative five, and the zero, one and three, is going to be what? Is a basis, is a basis for the row space. The row space of A, which is equivalent to what? And the, so therefore, Therefore, uh, this is going to be one. It's also a basis. Okay, therefore, it is also a basis. Is also a basis for the subspace. For the subspace, because that's the definition. Subspace is spanned by span by those three vectors, V1, V2, and V3. That's one of those main application of this uh, type of, you know, type of ideas. So you have quite a lot in your book uh, to, related to this, you know, this ideas, this concept. Okay, so they are uh, interesting. We can relate these together to get these numbers. Okay, so that's a row of space and the a row space and the column space. And this is how we're going to characterize them. We need the basis to be able to be able to do it. And we come back to it again uh, once more in the next uh, uh, section, but otherwise we are not going to use it. Okay, so this is it. And there is only one more concept of this, which is going to be very useful in future when we get to the function format or the linear transformation. And that would be the null space of a matrix. Okay, so let's give you that definition too to finish this, uh, you know, this section 4.7. So what is going to be null space? Null space. Null space of a matrix. You see, these type of ideas are very popular, even in calculus. If a function is given to you in calculus, we have something we call it zero set. Okay, zero set of a function. Zero set of a function means you have a function f of x, you let it equal to zero, 
f of x equal to the zero, you find the solutions. So if you find the solution of uh, f of x equal to the zero, they are going to be called zero sets, okay? Null space is something similar to that type of ideas. You have a matrix, you have a matrix. If you want to do like in algebra that we talk about it, if you think about the matrix as a function, so what you would like to do is you would like to find the solution of the equation of A times X equal to the zero. Okay, if you find these, uh, okay, this uh, equation, if you like, this equation would be, uh, would be a subspace. It would be a subspace that we call it null space. Okay, it's very, very popular. It's the same thing. Zero set of a function in calculus is quite interesting. Many, many properties. It's going to be the same thing for this one, okay? So we say zero set kernel of a linear transformation is going to be used when we get to the function part of the okay linear algebra. Okay, so basically in calculus, zero sets in an algebra, and you think about the matrix as a function, so ax equal to the zero. Okay, so this is the origin of a definition. Here you are. If a is going to be an m by n matrix. Okay, matrix, then the set of all solution, this is it, then the set of all solutions, solutions uh, of the, of this equation, okay, you know, your equation is going to be a system of the equation, of course, uh, of the, of the system system of a linear equation, linear equations, equations, there you are, a times x equal to the zero. Like in algebra, f of x equal to zero. This is a times x. Okay, so if a is a, the set of all the solutions, it's gonna be a subspace. Is a subspace, it's going to be a subspace of uh, Rn. Make sure you know the dimension. It's M times N. Okay, it's going to be M times N. So the N is the number of the columns that give you the unknown. Remember, this is what X1, X2, X3, X4, that, that, that. So the number of the column is N. So this is a subspace of Rn. Okay, so uh, it's going to be the case then the set of all uh, these uh, solutions of the system is going to be a subspace of Rn that we call it, okay, called the null space. Okay, the null space, the null space of A. Okay, it's denoted by, it is notation denoted by, Okay, we denote by n of a, if you like, for null, n of a. And of course, uh, is defined by, again, defined by, uh, this is it. So it's a null of a is equal to, as we talk about, it's gonna be x. Your x is gonna be in Rn. Okay, x, I mean, this is it. This notation means X is in Rn, belongs to Rn, such that A times X is equal to the zero. Okay, so the solution of this, uh, this equation, that's it. The solution of this equation is called, called null space. So it's gonna be a subspace, so you know that each subspace would have a dimension. This dimension is gonna be a number. That number is called nullity of A. Okay, so the dimension, the dimension of the null space, the null space, the null space of A is going to be called, okay, we call it uh, the nullity, the nullity, nullity of A. Okay, it's going to be a number. 
the nullity of it. Okay, so we have to form this uh, system of the equation to solve it to get the solution. Uh, most of the time, this is going to be a kind of uh, dependent system. Uh, then you will get, you know, you, it's going to be infinity many solutions. You get infinity many solutions. In that case, you know that that infinity many solution will form a subspace. And we already uh, given you some problems. How are we going to find those bases for this subspace? Because you have to find the basis. You find the basis, then you get the dimension. Okay, so the operation is already done. Even you get one of them, you did one of them too, in fact, in your uh, test. But we just ask you to find the dimension of the subspace. But we are going to repeat it again on the next quiz, but we are going to give us the name. Okay, so you did this type of problems before we prepare you. So that's it. One matrix, one question, and ask you. We ask you to find. Okay, find the null space. The null space. Okay, I have the matrix. Of the matrix, matrix A. Okay, you know, there is going to be a theorem that you can find these numbers quickly. But we want to avoid it, so we are going to emphasize, oh, we need a basis, remember. Because you can find that number quickly, we will give you a theorem. But we need a basis, determine a basis. A basis for the, for the null space. Null space. So this means you have to find it. You find the basis, you know that. The number of the vectors in your basis is going to be uh, the null, the dimension. And that dimension is what you are looking for. Okay, so straightforward. And these numbers are popular, give us some characteristic of the matrix or matrices and use in future. Okay, so this is it. You have one, two, negative two and one. And we have a three, six, negative five and four and we have one two zero three okay this is the given matrix and you want to find the null space so basically you just find the the, the solution of the equations okay so we know what to do solution you have to solve this system okay uh, solve the system Solve the system. What is the system? Ax equal to the zero. That's it. You solve this system first to find the, that subspace. When you find it, then you are going to give us a basis. Okay, you know that the, the system, if you want to solve it, you have to go with your augmented matrix. So what's going to be augmented matrix? These are going to be your coefficients of the matrix. Okay, so this is it. You have to check hey, this one. You get a one, two, negative two, one, and you have a zero here because of the constant vector. And this is going to be three, six, negative five, four, zero here. And you have one, two, zero, three, and the zero here. So we just remind you that this is augmented matrix. Okay, augmented matrix. And try to solve it. You know that you have to change it to the row and form and get your get your result. That is uh, the way you okay, you you you've done it before. So uh, we check it again. You already got the one here, so you have to take care of these and change this into the into the zero. So just the usual usual operation. So this is R2, you change the R2 into the R2 minus 3R1. And for this one, you just add them together. Okay, so this is going to be what? This is going to be R2, you change it to the R2 minus, minus R1. Quickly, uh, you change this one to get these uh, zeros. Okay. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's clear. I just write it down, the, the conclusion that we're going to have. 
and you know it can be a, a couple of steps that would take care of it right away so the resulted matrix is going to be this one so the first row is going to be unchanged okay the first row is going to be unchanged so i have the the one two negative two one zero and the second one when i change it, it's going to be zero zero okay zero zero one one zero and the other one is going to be zero zero two two zero okay so if you do those type of operation you get this one okay so uh, you know what to do for the next one this would take care of it for you so you change the r2 into what we change the r2 into the r2 um, okay r2 minus uh, sorry that's r3 okay so this is the r3 we change it to the we change it to the r3 okay r3 minus 2 r2 it's always the case you get to the dependent system so we are going to have a row with zeros so this is going to be one two negative one negative two one zero okay so this would stay the same but of course the last one is going to be zero 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 okay this is going to be the case that we are going to have okay to get to the that's it you get the zero zero okay so i have the zero here and this is going to be one and so what i need to do is just take care of this one uh, I just want to change it to the row echelon form, okay, to get those numbers, or you can stay with this one, just uh, keep going, doesn't matter. Okay, you'll be fine, but uh, I like to change this one into the zero, so what I do is uh, going to be, this is the R1, I change it to the R1 plus 2R2. Even you can stay, you can start working on this one right now, but to get there, to make it official, it's going to be one, two, zero, three, zero. And these are going to be the same thing, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, and this is going to be zero, 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 and the, and the zero. Okay, that would be fine, even you can stop here. Okay, so this is, remember you are solving the system of the equations. Now, this system would have infinity many solutions. Okay, this system would have infinity many solutions. And remember, you have, you have what? You have something like the x1, x2, x3, and the x4. Okay, so we were looking for this system, remember? We are looking for these solutions. So, infinity many solutions, because you have one, two, three, four, you have only two non zero rows. So, you have to pick a two, three, uh, variables okay you check to see which are those are going to be free so i'm going to rewrite uh, the conclusion so the conclusion that i have is going to be x1 plus uh, 2x2 plus uh, 3x4 equal to the zero from the first one and from the second one i will have uh, x3 plus x4 equal to the zero only okay this is all we got here uh, so so what we are going to do is we have to pick two of these to be free. So from this one, I can have the, let's say, x3 equal to the negative x4. So two free one. So you can pick the three and the four to be free or just one of them. Okay, so what I do is I start from, the, from the, this last part. So I pick the x4 to be equal to t. Okay, then I can have x3. x3 would be equal to the negative t. Okay, so I got two. Then I want to go here. Uh, so I have to pick one more. Okay, I pick the x2. So I pick the x2 to be something like, I call it, you know, call it r, call it s, call it r. Okay, so these are going to be my two free ones. Okay, two, three, one. Then that would enable me to find the, okay, by the first one, 
I can find the x1, so it's going to be x1, uh, 2r2, which is going to be 2r, okay, 2r and the 3, 3t equal to the 0. So I got the x1, which is negative 2r minus 3t. Okay, so there you are. I have all the four that I need. Okay, so uh, you put them together, that give you your null space, okay? So your null space, remember, is just this uh, result. So what's gonna be the null space? The null space is going to be equal to, okay, equal to the solution of your system. So what is the solution of your system? So I write it down here for you. It's going to be x1, x2, x3, x4. So these points are x1 is a negative 2r minus 3t, comma. x2 is r. x3 is a negative t. And the x4 is t. So you have to give us this set. So what's going to be your set? solutions are going to be the numbers, uh, the vectors of this format, negative 2r plus uh, minus 3t, r, negative t, and the t, and this is where r and t, r and t uh, are going to be our real numbers, r in r. Okay, I mean they are real numbers. Okay, as you can see, you have two, two free agents, free variables, so the dimension is two uh, right away. But you need to give us a basis. Remember the basis, we talk about it. You change this R and the T into the zero one to create a, uh, okay, a basis. So this is it. So you start with the, you have to give us a basis, remember. This is negative T and the T. So I would like to have a T first. Remember, if you like the T, you replace the T by one, everything else by zero. So the, the T by one, R by zero, so that give me negative three. Okay, R zero, T one, negative one, one. So that's when T is equal to one plus, you would like the R, so replace R by one, everything else by zero. So that give a negative two, negative two R would be negative two, S is zero. And that give you one. And the other one would be zero, zero. Okay, so you can write each members as a linear combination of these two. So that give you the basis. Okay, so as you can see, as you can see, you claim that I have a negative three, zero, negative one and one, comma, I have a negative two, one, zero, zero. This is gonna be is a basis. Is a basis for N of A, the null space. The dimension or nullity is equal to two. One, two. So nullity nullity of A is equal to two. Okay, so you have to find that basis for us. You find your basis, uh, this is it. You can create the, the null of A by just using two vectors. So this means the dimension is two. So this is the way you are going to get this. This number can be found, uh, you know, we have an equation, we call it, we call it uh, dimension equation. But that's why we arrange it. We ask for it. We ask for the N of A, as you did it before, N of A. We ask for the basis and this last number. Okay, and that would be the, the nullity and the null space of a matrix A. That section, okay, that is section 4.7. 4.8 is very easy. You can read it yourself, but I, you know, I have another class I have to go now. And I don't want this one to be too long. So I post another one for you, a short one. I talk about the 4.8 for you. Don't worry. But get this one quickly. Nice. Okay. Very nice one. 
nice idea, I studied carefully. Uh, so three problems really, the three examples that I did, three problems that you got to know from this section for, okay, for the test and for, you know, when we want to continue. And quite an interesting argument. We just extended something from uh, algebra, which is a zero set to null space, and they are going to be used, are going to be used in, in future, okay? So I post this one, have a look at it, and uh, I will uh, give you that uh, 4.8, uh, on uh, probably Saturday. Okay, uh, Saturday, so we finish this and we start working on that the last two sections, which is a very important one, okay? So I'm not going to rush it by, by Sunday, we should be fine with the 4.7 and 4.8 and start working on that, uh, you know, linear transformation, which is algebra and it's quite, you know, nice uh, uh, to, to work with that one, okay? So have a good day and uh, take care. Bye-bye.